Welcome to the Functional Medicine Radio Show with your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga, known internationally as the Functional Medicine Doc. Dr. Carrie is committed to helping patients find the root cause of their health problems and fixing the cause with natural treatments so they can feel normal again. Dr. Carey is the founder of Functional Medicine Ontario and is the author of the hit book, Reclaim Your Energy and Feel Normal Again. Please welcome your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Functional Medicine Radio Show, the only Internet radio show dedicated to giving you real solutions to improve your health. Not only are they real solutions, but they're natural solutions as well, because as you know, the one and only true wealth you have is your health. I'm your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga, the functional medicine doc, and I'm committed to helping you find the root cause of your health problem, fix the cause with natural treatments, so you can feel normal again and live your life to the fullest. Just a quick bit of housekeeping before I introduce today's special guest. I'm so happy to announce that I'm now working on my next book. The title is Reclaim Your Digestive Health and Feel Normal Again, Fixing the Root Cause of Your GI Distress with Natural Treatments. This book should be ready later this year, so keep an eye out for it. That's it for our housekeeping, so let's get started. This week's show is all about how to recover from grief and loss and feel better naturally. My special guest is an expert and someone that I greatly admire. Her name is Natalia Vols. Let me tell you a little bit about her. She is a grief guide. She speaks on loss, grief, and most importantly, recovery from the pain of grief. Natalia guides grieving people by facilitating workshops, teleseminars, and individual sessions. She also educates and supports those who want to help children, friends, neighbors, and colleagues after a loss. Natalia's expertise is based on her first-hand experience with loss and grief. Back in 2010, after a two-year battle with pancreatic cancer, her husband died at the age of 49. She eventually found her way through her devastating pain while raising her three young children alone. Natalia hopes that you will walk away today with a deeper understanding of a subject we normally avoid, but we'll all have to confront firsthand at some point in our lives. She aims to give you tools to help yourself and others in need to heal more quickly after a loss. Natalia, thank you so much for being my special guest today on this episode of the Functional Medicine Radio Show. Dr. Carey, thank you so much for having me. Okay, so, um, oh my gosh, there's so much I want to ask you today. In my private practice at Functional Medicine Ontario, in functional medicine, we're always trying to get to the root underlying cause of where health problems come from, and oftentimes I find it comes from a major stress in somebody's life, and that stress can be from something that they had to grieve through, either a divorce or an illness of a close family member or a death of a loved one. So can you talk about how does grief and loss affect our body and our health? Well, first of all, Dr. Carey, I have to say I am so glad that you are doing this work and that you look at the root causes because I think I, I say often doctors don't, and so they're treating the wrong problem. Um, grief comes, first of all, can I talk about the definition of grief? Yes, yes, Because I think this is really important um, to understand what grief is before we get into how it affects us. Um, first of all, grief is the normal and natural response to a significant loss, such as death, divorce, job loss. You know, there's so many significant losses that we could have over the course of our life. And the normal and natural responses will, could be so many things. You know, what do we do when we lose something as a baby? If the bottle's taken out of their mouth before they're ready for it to be gone, what do they do? Scream and cry. They scream and cry. They kick their legs. And, they, and that is the normal and natural response to a loss. Grief is also, it's the conflicting feelings after a change in a familiar pattern of behavior. So with the divorce, although people will say, you know, they wanted the divorce. Why are they upset? It is still a great change in what was familiar. And so the body reacts to that change and says something's different and begins to react. 
So we'll talk about that more because that's one of the keys is that we understand what grief is, and then we can understand how our body is reacting to it. Okay, so I have to um, jump in and tell you the, the story. I had a, I had a new patient come in not that long ago, and uh, she was telling me about her health problems. She was coming in specifically for depression, and I was asking her, like, when did this all start? Like, when do you remember feeling really good, and then when do you remember feeling like the depression starting? And she said, well, it was like 20 years ago, and um, her boyfriend broke up with her. And she said she just never felt like her normal self after that. And Natalia, she was sitting across from me in in my office, and she was just crying her eyes out. And this is 20 years later. And I knew that she is still holding on, and she's still grieving. And and how can we help walk her through that? That is so correct. I just was talking with a woman the other day that had... um, her baby died at childbirth 40 years ago Uh and she started crying as she was telling me and she said I'm so grateful that you do this work grief we like to say time heals all wounds but honestly if we don't grieve properly or naturally we don't heal from that and I work with many people who are still grieving 10 20 30 years later and doctors often mistreat it and we say that it looks like depression and we're very quick to put people on antidepressants and in fact now it's been passed that antidepressants can be um, administered to someone who's had a loss six weeks after their loss and it is not depression grief can look like depression um, but it is not and that's what you're seeing so I'm so glad that you you caught that that she's still grieving. It doesn't matter how many years she hadn't properly grieved that loss. So are there any other kind of signs or symptoms that a person might have that would... Oh, there's so many. Um, Boy, it can come out in a million different ways. It can come out through heart problems. How often do we know how many heart attacks and how many heart problems are really related to losses? Um, Honestly... I think cancers. One of the ways that I got into this work is because after my husband died, I said I would grieve for, you know, I might grieve for a year. I'm going to really grieve properly. I didn't know what that meant. And then I have to come back and live because I have three young children to raise, so I have to be here for them. Well, after a year, I wasn't feeling better. At the end of two years, I was panicking because I was not feeling better. I didn't know how to actually heal from my grief. I wasn't doing it properly. But the scarier part was I started meeting people where one young spouse died, and within two years, the other spouse was diagnosed with cancer and died. And It scared me because I had three young children and I didn't want to leave them orphaned. And I thought, this is not a coincidence that I keep hearing about these cases. Um, I don't know if you remember Superman, who was sick for a very long time as a quadriplegic. And um, his wife cared for him for, I think it was 10 years or so. And then within two years after he died, she was diagnosed with non-smoker's lung cancer and died. And I heard of case after case, and I actually had a dear friend who both of our husbands were sick at the same time. Her husband died right before mine. Then my husband died. A year later, she called me, and she says, I have bad news. I've been diagnosed with cancer, and she died a year later. And so I, the effects, you know, we don't always know, and we don't talk about it. But I think to not heal our grief it comes out in accidents are greatly increased looking at why when people had accidents it is often within two years after a good loss because our brain is not if we don't heal the grief our brain is not functioning strongly Uh, we're absent-minded our memory is weak we're just not as alert and um, people always tell me about accidents so grief can manifest in many different ways. So we've so, talked about oh, a million cancer, different ways. Right. cancer, depression. I can see it in my practice, chronic pain patients, yes. chronic fatigue yes. patients, the fatigue. Hormone, fatigue. hormone imbalances, digestive imbalances, like chronic Everything. headaches, 
many different ways. Yes, exactly. So then how do we know if we're still grieving? So for the listeners out there mm-hmm. that have gone through a loss, um, how do they know if they are still grieving or not? First of all, like you said, the example that you had, if you just have lower energy and a loss of aliveness, that was not something that you had your whole life, but you know, in the last 10 years or after a big loss or a big change in your life, you noticed a real difference. Um, if you have depression and antidepressants aren't working, if you'd gone to that doctor, that happened for me, that my doctor, when I told her that my husband had been diagnosed with a terminal cancer, she quickly put me on antidepressants, did not allow me to let my body grieve properly. I didn't know at that time that that would not be helpful. It didn't make a difference that I was on the antidepressants. They didn't work because I didn't have this chemical imbalance or whatever it is that, um, you know, antidepressants, how it affects your body. So I was still crying. I was still not functioning uh, as as I'd like in my life. Other Other ways that you know that you're still grieving. If you feel sad or angry when you think of the person who is now gone. So do you ever know people who tell the same story of a loss again and again and again? And they just keep trying to process it. Well, we get tired of hearing it. But what's happened is they have not properly grieved that loss. So they'll keep playing it over and over and over again in their head trying to come to terms with it. If fond memories turn to sadness, so you can't really enjoy the relationship, um, the good parts of the relationship, because they always turn to crying, that's a sign that you have not recovered from your grief. And if you're getting sick a lot more since the loss or death, my daughter she had never been sick prior to her father dying. She had she didn't miss a day of school every year. She was just had that everybody else may get a cold in the family that would last five days. Hers it would last maybe twenty four hours. Very healthy constitution. Um, after her father died, sick constantly. Just every illness. I mean, we had her down at the children's hospital checking her heart she had and I kept saying you have heart you have your heart is broken it's a heartache they couldn't find anything wrong with her heart Um, but she was having these palpitations um, and just a real ache in her heart and the school would make me pick her up and get her she wasn't allowed to return until I had her heart checked out Um, so those are some and like I said feeling feeling depressed um, when you weren't prior to the loss Okay, so is there a time frame that, you know, people usually go through? How long does it take to recover from grief and loss? Well, that's a good question. A lot of people ask that. We have to remember that our grief is unique to each of us. You know, our loss and our relationship is unique, and so is our grief. Time Magazine did research that and said that the average person grieves for four to eight years. That's not what our culture gives us um, as time to grieve. In about six weeks after our loss, people have forgotten our loss and are wanting us to move on. And so we begin to act in unhealthy ways, pretending that we're feeling better when we're not. That's the effect when the lasagna stop coming to your house. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so people, you know, at the beginning, there's just this outpouring of support, and then they're saying, okay, move on now, get busy. That doesn't help us heal our grief. And the report saying four to eight years, I remember when I heard that, and I thought, I don't have four to eight years. You know, I have these children that need a mother. And it doesn't have to take that time. That, again, is because we aren't taking the proper action. There are specific behaviors that can help us move our grief uh, through through us. Okay, so, so let's jump into that. Mm-hmm. And what are those actions, those behaviors? How do we heal naturally from grief and loss? Yes. So we have to remember, as is 
with your work. Our body has everything it needs for us to live healthy, you know, we are supposed, we are well beings. We are supposed to live well. And loss is also a natural part of life, that we will all experience losses in our life. So we need to remember that, first of all. And so let's listen to our body and respect what it's telling us. Believe it. So in the beginning, you may feel numb. You may feel exhausted. Then what do you think you should do? What would be the natural response to exhaustion? Get more Rest. sleep. Yeah. <laughs> more sleep. <laughs> and people think, oh, you know, I can't. And I understand. We have jobs and we have things, you know, I had to care for my children. I had to work. Uh, but rest more. So if you can, take a nap. Take a nap. And don't judge that. You're not, you're not um, doing it wrong. You're not, people always tell me, you know, they think they're grieving wrong. I said, that's impossible. Our body knows what it needs. So if it's exha exhausted, rest more. In the beginning, our um, digestive system slows down because we're in this stressful state. And our body in a stressful state goes into, you know, kind of shuts down to protect us. It's a fight or flight. We need to get running and we don't have time to eat. Naturally, listen to that. So drink water. I always, you know, I just tell people at the beginning, drink water, rest more, be kind to yourself. Those, you know, at the beginning, that's what we want to really look at. And in the past, you know, a thousand years ago, the culture and the community would surround us and take care of us in the beginning because that's what our body needed. It just needs to rest and get used to this idea that this loved one is gone and that we are not feeling protected. We are feeling alone. Later on, we, you may feel anxious, you may feel panicky. I mean, grief is just different, like I said, to each person, but listening to your body. If you feel really anxious, get moving. If your body feels, sometimes we feel almost frozen in this panic state, but shaking, I remember someone told me early on, and I thought this was great advice. They told me that if I, I couldn't get my children to stamp their feet and scream and yell, put on music that you can't help but move to and get that energy flowing through you. So really, you know, I was doing jumping jacks, running in place, going for walks, trying to release some of that pent up energy in our body. And so moving is a good thing to do. Another thing that's extremely important, we are human beings, we are social beings. And so we actually need each other to heal. We are not turtles. <laughs> turtles, when they're born, they come out of their egg and they never see their mother. They don't need to see another turtle. They have their shell to protect them. But we don't. We are reliant on, on each other to recover and to be safe. And so we must talk to others who understand and are good listeners and won't try to fix it or tell us to get over it, but can allow us to have this experience and believe in us to heal. That's how we, we heal naturally. Our body knows what it needs. We just need people who believe in us, will walk beside us while we're suffering, stay with us through the whole time, doesn't mean every day, but you know, kind of check in and validate our loss. So that sounds like a lot of what you do is just being there to support that person, whether it's a family member or a friend or a colleague, to just kind of support them as they're going through it. That is a, that's a big part of it. There's also specific tools. Like I said, there are specific actions and behaviors that, that we need to take to um, process the loss. So what happens is there are, um, when, when someone dies, and we go to the funeral, what do people say about the person who died? Do we ever hear how horrible they were? Usually not. Usually not. We end up telling them... Even if they were horrible. 
Even if they were horrible. Yeah, we usually don't hear they, that stuff. No, they become saints right. after they die. Well, you know what? That's not the whole relationship. It's not the whole person. And so we, we cannot heal from our grief when we only focus on one half of the relationship. And so part of healing is being able to look at the whole relationship, being able to look at the whole person and talk about what we miss, what we're angry about. Um, I have so many people who come to me and when I talk to them and they can begin to talk about the whole relationship, they say, oh, you know, the funeral, like not even the funeral, after everyone comes up and tells me my mother was so amazing and all the amazing things she did in her life for them. And the person will start crying and saying, she didn't do that for me. And there's nowhere for them to have that conversation. And that conversation needs to be had. So I lead people through a number of steps that help them complete the pain around the relationship. That often others do not feel comfortable. Friends and relatives and colleagues, neighbors, don't feel comfortable with our pain. And we need a place where someone is comfortable, believes in us, and can handle our pain so that we can work it through and come back to wholehearted and joyful living. I can totally, I can totally see that, that, <clears throat> how can I say it? Um, other people see the highlight reel, but we see the raw footage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very good. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Oh, okay, there's so no room for that. You know, we think there's no room for that. So think about, you know, gosh, they don't know our dirty laundry, you know? Yeah. Okay, so I know that you have a whole process that you take your clients through to help them recover from their grief and move beyond um, their loss to having a whole, more of a whole hearted living. And you call it the relief process. So can you tell our listeners about that? Yes. So I developed a process after I've just studied grief for a long time. I've been trained as an, uh, as a certified grief specialist and a coach. And looking at my own grief and all the people that I've worked with, I realized that, first of all, we need to heal that relationship. And one thing is that people will be crying and they'll say, I don't even know why I'm crying because they aren't conscious of the thoughts that are creating the feeling. So we have a feeling, but that feeling comes up from some thought or belief behind the feeling. And so in the relief process, I help people to recognize their current thoughts and the feelings associated with those thoughts. What are the beliefs that you've had your whole life that are affecting it? So let's say you're married and your husband dies. And when you were a child, you were always told that the husband provides for the woman. Then your husband dies. Well, do you think that you might experience panic? Absolutely. Nobody understands that. So they're saying, you know, get over it. Well, how do you get over when you have this deep-seated thought and belief that you are not safe without a man to take care of you? So we have to first recognize the thoughts and the beliefs that we are playing over in our head again and again and how those are creating, they're coming out in these feelings. Thank goodness for our feelings. We have to allow the feelings so that they can talk to us and tell us what we're really feeling. And then we need to express those emotions, express all our pain, and tell our story, express our story to someone who can listen and validate um, your story. We all need to be validated. And then the next step in relief is leaving our old thought patterns behind and reframing our thoughts for the life that we are moving toward. So defining that life, okay, this has happened. Where do I want to go from here? How do we go forward? And, and helping identify, like, have a new identity so you need to re have your life redefined after your loss so people say you have to get back to normal there's no getting back to normal there's a new normal there's a new identity that needs to be developed after your loss you need to explore and create your new identity and we need to empower ourselves through these new thoughts 
in realizing our inner strength and what do we what thoughts bring us better feelings what thoughts inspire us to action and help us focus in the direction we want to go and then the F in relief is finding freedom through our feelings and focusing on desires and taking continuous small steps toward this new self this new sense of self fantastic okay so I have a few more questions for you okay that I've, I've been thinking of here so one is I'm um, going back to how um, grief and loss can physically manifest in the body mm-hmm. in in my practice at functional medicine Ontario I I tend to see a lot of women in my practice. It's about 75% women, 25% men. And a lot of women will come in to me and will kind of go back through time and they'll say, you know, I've never been well since my last pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of think, okay, that could be their immune system acting weird. That could be the hormones never really got back into balance. So then I had a thought, as you've been speaking of, could that be a loss? Yes. Yes. That they are grieving a loss, that they've lost Think their, about their loss freedom of, of their... Yes. Yes. So many women, and we have to, you know, what I was talking about when I said that when a spouse dies, what was that belief that you have? And so that is something that you'd want to talk to them about. What did it mean? Now, what happens again when you have a child? Does anyone say, oh, no, <laughs> poor you? We celebrate it, and it is a reason for celebration, Mm -hmm. but the whole person may also have a lot of fears. I remember that for me, I was very excited to be pregnant. I wanted so badly to have children, and after I had my children, though, it meant being dependent on my husband. I stayed home with my children in the beginning, and I felt really nervous um, for the type of person that I was. Um, I was in my mid-30s when I had children, so I had been independent for a long time. And we need to look at that. What did that pregnancy and what did those children mean? And there aren't a lot of places that we can talk about that. Okay, so here's my next question. What about people that just don't grieve at all? They have a death or a loss and it's just kind of like, okay, well, that just happened and life goes on. And they, is, is that... Do, is that normal? They do still, some people they, just not grieve? Or they just they're just doing it in a different grieving. way? They're still grieving. It just looks different. So it's the normal and natural response to a loss. And for some people, it's rare. But for some people, they really are at peace. So there could be um, an elder. You know, I work, with, I work at a hospice also. And um, so I talk to a lot of families where there was an elderly parent. Mm-hmm. Sometimes... The, the adult child will be very sad about the loss. There might have been some incomplete communication. That's often when grief will uh, show itself more, when we did not get to say things that we needed to say. Even if we knew they were dying, we often don't say everything we need to say. But they're still grieving if they don't have what we may say. They may not be crying. They may not be angry. That's just their normal and natural response. And if they were at peace, they said everything they wanted to say, they feel okay in themselves, it can, grief can be that they go on and feel happy and they can talk about the person and they express themselves and that's fine. Okay, so for our listeners out there, for our listeners that have a friend or a colleague that right now is going through grief or Mm -hmm. loss or for themselves personally, they're going through some grief or loss, what are some things that they can start doing today to help um, get them through this process, uh, besides calling you? I mean, we all know that that is number one. They should call you. (laughs) If you call me, they can look at my website because I do have information for friends because this is so important. Really, it is our friends, our neighbors, our family that I would like to see helping us through our grief. That's That's what what we need. need. What we need to realize first as a friend is believing in them. It helped me. It helps others when I tell them, I believe in you to recover from this. I understand. I hear that you're in pain. So validate how they're feeling. Don't tell them they need to move on. Don't tell them 
their loved ones in a better place. That's intellectualizing, and it doesn't make us feel better. It makes us feel like what we're feeling isn't okay. So it's most important. I say, um, I learned from the Grief Recovery Institute, be a heart with, um, with ears, no mouth. <laughs> Um, you don't have to say, we're so afraid we avoid people who are grieving because we think we don't know what to say. I was just thinking that, yes. So many so we say this, these things, like, oh, they're in a better place. and doesn't yeah, make it's it because we not, don't know what to say. We don't, don't know what to say. So, so what I say, say, this is number one tip, is just say, I'm so sorry. I don't, I don't know what to say. say. How could I help you today? What is there something that I could do today? And if they say, I don't know, because really your brain is so confused after the loss, is pick one thing. Call them when you're at the store and say, I'm at the store. Do you need milk? No, but I do need butter. Um, what, stop over and sit with them and just match their breathing and allow them to have, don't try to pat them and hug and stop the tears, but just sit with maybe a hand on their knee and allow them to cry and talk. Use their loved one's name. You don't stop using. So say the person who died, say their name. What do you miss about John? You know, how are you feeling today? Not, you, you know, know how, how are you how are you doing? Because what, what do people, people say when we say, say how are you doing? doing? Oh, I'm fine. Fine. They're not fine. Yes. <laughs> um, there's an acronym for fine that um, that is not yes yeah, not fine. So don't say how are you doing, but you could say how are you feeling in this moment? Because sometimes they may be feeling okay in this moment. You know, maybe they're laughing at this moment because we can laugh in our grief. We go on living. But ask them, what could I do right now? Or how could I help you today? Could I pick up your kids and bring them somewhere? Could I take you out for coffee? Could I bring over some soup and sit and have that with you? Remember also as a friend that grief lasts way, way longer than the lasagnas are coming. You know, they're six weeks, the food stops coming, and honestly, for a significant loss, a year is not long. Um, really commonly for people that I'm talking to, it can be two years for someone who is even figuring their way in, who are doing quite well at moving through their grief. It doesn't have to be that long. We really can heal in a few months. Um, I hate to say all of, but, but to date, all of my clients have felt better within a few months. They're feeling a lot of relief. But, um, but grief takes a lot longer than we expect. So be kind, be gentle, don't have expectations, have non-judgmental curiosity about their experience through this struggle. Uh, those were all fantastic points that you brought up, and I'm sure our listeners and myself, we have learned so much with this interview today. How can our listeners find out more about you? Where is your website? Do you have a Facebook page? Tell us everything. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Um, my website is passingthroughgrief.com, and spell out through. Um, and I also have a Facebook page with Passing Through Grief and Natalia Vols. And yes, go to my website. I have some free materials. I have free materials for friends so that you can help your friend with more advice for helping your friend through grief and some really great materials for starting to feel better right away if you are grieving. And even if you're unsure if you're grieving but you had a loss in the past 10 or 20 years and you don't feel the same, I have some materials that will will show you, you know, you'll be able to see if maybe you're grieving. So go to my website, check it out. Also, if you'd like to talk with me, I offer a free consultation. We can talk for a half hour and, and find out, you know, if, if this is grief and if I'm able to help you move through it more quickly and with less intensity. Okay, for the listeners out there, I'll make sure that all of those links are in the podcast notes on uh, my uh, podcast page. 
at drcarrie.com so that you can easily find Natalia and all of her good things. Natalia, thank you so much for being my special guest today. This has just been an awesome interview. Thank you. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. All right, that wraps up this very special episode of the Functional Medicine Radio Show with Natalia Vols. And I want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in today. And I'd like to invite you back next week for another episode of the Functional Medicine Radio Show. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga, the Functional Medicine Doc. Have a great week, everyone. You've been listening to the Functional Medicine Radio Show with your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga, known internationally as the Functional Medicine Doc. Dr. Carey is committed to helping patients find the root cause of their health problems and fixing the cause with natural treatments so they can feel normal again. Dr. Carey is the founder of Functional Medicine Ontario and is the author of the hit book, Reclaim Your Energy and Feel Normal Again. Please tell your friends about the Functional Medicine Radio Show, and we'll see you next week with more from Dr. Carey.